And the Clemson University Tigers are first up. They are the fifth seed in the Midwest Regional. They are representing the Atlantic Coast Conference. They have advanced here from San Diego where they defeated New Mexico State and Auburn. They'll play number one seed Kansas in tomorrow night's first game at 6.09 p.m. The men's basketball contact is Ben Winteroud. And the head coach to my right is Brad Brownell. We're gonna ask Brad to open up with a statement about his team being here in Omaha, and then we will go to questions. Brad, please. Well, obviously very excited about being uh, here in Omaha. Couldn't be more pleased with uh, the way our guys played out in San Diego. I thought we played some of the best basketball of our season, uh, especially in the win over Auburn. Just uh, thought we were very good on both ends, and uh, it, was, it was just really a sweet uh, situation for us. Really, really happy for our seniors who've been through some some things here with our program, and uh, couldn't be more excited about having the opportunity to play a great Kansas team. Uh, Bill's done an unbelievable job with their team. They're probably not your typical Kansas team with two big power players and the high-low motion offense that you usually see. Uh, they've got four guards. They spread you out, play with great pace, make ten threes a game. Um, have some unique action in their dribble drive um, with a lot of cutting to, to make it a little bit more difficult to guard. And, and uh, obviously, we know they're going to be a big uh, Kansas contingent here. So uh, we'll have to play extremely well, but uh, really looking forward to the game. Questions? Right here on the left here, Brett. Brad, this week uh, the NBA and USA Basketball released a, recommend, a set of recommendations and new rules they'd like to see implemented for, for youth basketball. Uh, high school shot clock, lower baskets, um, no zone defense, no three-point shot until 12 years old. What, as, a, as a college coach, what would you like to see developmentally change in youth basketball? Uh, I would be for a lot of those reasons. Uh, or adjustments. My dad was a high school uh, coach in southern Indiana, so I grew up around the game. And, and uh, you know, I, watching the game, it's very much overcoached at the youth age. Um, and what I mean by that is everybody's trying to put plays in and play zone defenses instead of just teaching kids fundamentals and uh, passing and dribbling and shooting skills. And I, I think playing on smaller goals is important to build good habits. Uh, I do think the shot clock is a good idea um, because it does force kids, especially as you begin to get older. And I wish we had it in high schools now because we have it in college to make more individual plays. Um, and there's going to be more possessions, so more plays are going to need to be made. So I do think those are all really good things. Uh, I'm a big proponent of man-to-man -man defense and uh, teaching kids really how to play. Uh, I think we have way too many folks that are, again, trying to win 10-year-old championships instead of just let's get kids to enjoy the game and uh, teach them how to play the game the right way. Yeah, Brad, uh, Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Uh, could you comment a little bit just on how this is kind of the ACC West uh, basketball tournament, with the exception, of course, you play Kansas tomorrow. But th does that do anything with the dynamic of it, just from a preparation standpoint, if, if um, you know those two teams collide? It doesn't affect us here early, just because you know our focus has just been on Kansas. But certainly, you know, should we win, then you know, whoever we play, we'll, we will have just played them in the last month. Obviously, Syracuse was our last regular season game up there. Um, Duke, we played recently at our place. Um, so, you know, the preparation in terms of a quick turnaround won't be as challenging as if it was somebody completely different like it was last week with Auburn. Um, again, I just think what the ACC has shown in this, this year's tournament again is just the quality of depth of the league. We obviously always have our Blue blood powerhouses, um, but you, you know you watch Florida State's in the Sweet 16. Syracuse has made it to the Sweet 16. Um, teams that finish in the middle or so of our league. If you can get in the tournament because of the way as competitive as our league is, you're you're going to have a chance to advance. Uh, it's just the type of teams we play, the quality of coaching, the quality of play. 
the different styles of play that are in our league, I think, make it unique or more unique than some of the other leagues where I think a lot of teams play almost the same. So I, I think all of those things, again, show that or help the teams in our league do well in this tournament. David Lawrence, Jayhawk Radio, excuse me. Uh, both teams are kind of built around some great guard play. Could you highlight your guys and then, and then talk about what you've seen in Kansas guards? Yeah, we have three really good players. Gabe DeVoe, uh, outstanding shooter, big strong wing, can put it on the floor and score and just having a terrific senior season. Uh, Marquise Reed, uh, Reed is just a one of those combo type guards that can really score, has a knack for scoring, can make threes, but also quick, uh, a, lot of a, a lot of shot making ability, some stuff you don't coach that he just has in terms of making runners and floaters and things of that nature. And then Shelton Mitchell is just a very good point guard with you know, good size, speed, makes threes, um, handles it well, and they're experienced, which I think is important, um, certainly the Kansas guards are, are all really good. Malik Newman is playing maybe as well as he's played um, right now. It looks like that, at least shooting the ball. We obviously haven't followed him all year, but he's at another level. Um, Devontae Graham we know very well and is an outstanding player, 17 points, eight assists a game, great pace, can score in the paint, make threes, puts pressure on your defense. Uh, Svee is Dynamic on the wing, big, 6'8", long, athletic, shoots threes, drives closeouts, getting the paint, score over top of you. Uh, you know, Vic, another unbelievable athlete, makes threes. I mean, it, it just goes on and on about their team. It's why they're really good, I think. But the, the thing that needs to be said uh, from a coaching perspective and what's fun about coaching in these tournaments is getting the opportunity to study other teams. and. I've seen Bill's teams from afar because I'm a basketball junkie and I study everything. Um, but to watch him do what he's doing with this group, uh, unbelievable coaching job to take a different kind of team and to still win the conference and get them to play at this level. He just, it's obviously why he's one of the best coaches in our game. <clears throat> hey coach, Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. You have upperclassmen, but, but KU's upperclassmen obviously have been to this point a lot, played a lot of yeah. tournament games, that kind of thing. Is that experience, that NCAA tournament experience, edge a concern at all? or? You know, not really. Um, I think the bigger advantage is them playing with their fans, and I think that's an advantage. Um, you know, it's different. Like, we, we, it was a true neutral court out in San Diego. Uh, New Mexico State had a nice following. Um, Auburn and Clemson, we had good followings, but the bigger advantage to me is 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 just playing in front of 12,000 of your your fans, and I think that's a significant advantage. Um, I think our guys, in terms of playing, we I mean, we think our league is just as good or better than any league in the country. We play great teams every week, um, you know, and obviously we've had some success against those teams. So, um, you know it. In terms of just playing in an important game, I hope that our guys are ready to play, and we showed that last week. Um, I, you know, if we somehow we don't play well, I think it would be easy to say that it was the stage, but um, it would probably be Kansas, is what it would be. And so I, I hope that that's not the issue. I hope our guys are comfortable and confident, and uh, we go in here and play like we just did last week because we played really well. We are halfway through this session already. Next question's on the left. Uh, Tony Boone, Omaha World Herald. Uh, Coach, uh, we've obviously known Clemson as a baseball brand up here, and the football program's success kind of speaks for itself. How important was taking this step for your basketball program, especially you mentioned earlier the Blue Bloods in your league and what you have here in this regional. How important is this step for where you want to get this program? Yeah, it's a big step for our program. You know, we haven't been to the Sweet 16 in 21 years, and, um, you know, it. our, our university's made a greater commitment to basketball a couple years ago. We. You know, we started fundraising soon after I got the job and took us some time to, to, you know, to get the money that we wanted and to get the support that we needed to, to, to change our facility and make the kind of adjustments that you have to have, provide facilities for your players, and we've done that now. And then to follow that up with a, a really good season shortly thereafter and make a Sweet 16 I think really will help us build our brand, 
continue to sell our program to recruits uh, and fans and, and make people more aware of Clemson basketball. Um, obviously, our football program is as good as any in the country. Our baseball program isn't much behind. Um, you know, they obviously have Omaha in their hats for a reason because that's the goal every year and, and often they get here. So basketball-wise, this was a big step for us. Yeah, Brad, uh, Eric Olson again from the AP. Uh, just as far as um, uh, getting to this point, did you see anything in this team early that gave you any hint that maybe they'd be able to do what they've done, you know, like that Ohio State win early? Yeah, actually I did. Uh, I told our staff after we beat Florida down in Florida and we had beaten Ohio State at Ohio State that uh, I thought we were Sweet 16 good. I really did. I thought uh, – I, I believed in this team from the start, though. And uh, when we went to Spain uh, on a foreign tour, I just left feeling unbelievably confident about our group because I, I loved our leadership. I loved the synergy and spirit of our team. And I knew we had good players. I knew our starting five were, were good players and would play well this season. Uh, but then after we – one at Ohio State in Florida. I, I told our staff I thought we were good enough to be in the Sweet 16 and maybe more. Now, after Dante got hurt at our 19th game, you know, I, I don't know if I felt that way. Uh, and maybe that's why this is even sweeter is because our guys have really had to overcome significant adversity, and we've had to make adjustments as a coaching staff here in the last month of the season. And, uh, you know, to our kids' credit, they've been extremely coachable and done the things we've asked them to do and it's resulted in us finishing tied for third in the ACC and uh, you know making it to the Sweet 16. Hi Brad, Jesse Newell from the Kansas City Star. You mentioned earlier you kind of expect something from a Bill Self team offensively. Can you just take me through your or what you thought when you popped in the tape and you saw what he was running this year? Well I've seen them because they're on TV so much and again I watch games a lot um, so I'd seen them play multiple Big 12 games. I, I don't sit there and watch from start to finish, but you know, I'll, I'll peek at games that interest me for 20, 30 minutes a night and just kind of follow some things. And, and uh, so I kind of had known that, that he was playing four guards and they were doing a mix of some dribble drive and some pick and roll and really spacing the floor. And uh, I just think it's really good stuff. And uh, he's done a terrific job of, you know, figuring out the best way to use his personnel. And uh, right now, I feel like they're really clicking. Uh, they just look like in the last couple weeks that they're, they're playing really high-level basketball. Anything else for the head coach of the Tigers? Final question right here. Coach, can you highlight the matchup in the bigs, Thomas and your other guys off the bench versus Yudoka Azabuki? Well, he's obviously huge. And it, uh, everybody you talk to about Kansas says, wait till you see him in person. Uh, so we know he's got great size and he's extremely competitive and physical. Uh, that competitive, like you see a very good competitive spirit in him uh, in terms of how he plays and how physical he is. And if he gets the ball into the basket, you really can't stop him. Um, you know, we have to do a good job of trying to, at least if he gets it, make it be six or eight feet away from the basket and make him make a bounce or two to try to make a play. Um, you know, Eli and, and Mark for us need to make him guard. Like he, he has to, we can't just let him stand under the basket and dunk balls and not have to play defense. We've got to make him play defense as well. Um, but he's obviously a big piece. Um, and in his absence, I think the other two guys did well. Obviously they're good players too. Those guys can, they're a little bit different. They're not quite as big, but um, they both have other things they do well that, that are highlighted in Bill's offense. Brad, thank you very much. Best okay. of luck. Thank you.
student athletes for Clemson are now with us, Gabe DeVoe, Dante Grantham, and we will go straight to questions for a 15 minute session. Start right there, thank you. Uh, Scott Kiefer with the Greenville News. For both of you, you got back from the initial round and campus was basically empty because you guys were on spring break. Coach Brownell said the other day, it was kind of a shame he, he thought y'all deserved some pats on the back from your fellow students. Do you share that sentiment? Gabe, you're first, please. Uh, yeah, both. I wish, I wish they were there. It would have been nice having a little extra buzz around campus uh, leading up to this weekend. But also, I think it was good for us in terms of, like Coach said, no distractions. Uh, we're able to rest up and uh, get ready for this week. Yeah, I agree with Gabe. Um, I mean, I wish fans was there just to celebrate with them and just give us encouragement of our hard work. But I'm happy that they were. And we needed to rest that day and just get ready for this game coming up. David Lawrence, Jayhawk Radio. Gabe, could you talk about the matchup of guards for, for each team that'll be going at it? And for Dante, how has this team changed without you in the lineup? Uh, yeah, uh, Kansas has great guards uh, on the perimeter, and it's going to be a tough matchup for us. Just the main thing, limiting, limiting some of the threes they get, uh, just trying to take away easy baskets. Um, I just think the guys got more confident, to be honest. Um, guys had to step up like a mirror and scar that played my position, and, and they really did that uh, since I went out. And guys like Gabe really stepped, stepped his game up, and Marquise. And I think our team's com uh, confident is at an all-time high right now. So I think just guys have stepped up and being very confident offensively and defensively, and, and, and nothing can stop it, to be honest. We'll run it right there, Carol. Mitch Sherman, ESPN.com. Dante, can you speak to the feelings, the emotions that you have uh, this week and, and through the tournament just as a result of, of your situation and having to watch your team like this? I mean, it's hard. This is one of the hardest things that I've been through. I mean, just to know that I've put in all the work in the off season, uh, really dedicated myself to getting better and our team, to be honest, really putting in the work and just us dreaming about being here and me dreaming about being here since I was young and just to go down with an injury my last year, it was tough, but I don't let it bother me that much. I got to stay with my team mentally and you can't take something back that already happened. So I'm just looking forward, keep getting better, rehabbing myself, but I'm always going to be here for the team, but it, it's, it's very tough for me, very tough. I love the game of basketball. Anything else for the student athletes of Clemson? Okay, gentlemen, you're dismissed. Thank you very much and best of luck. Next up will be the student athletes from Kansas at 12.30, followed by head coach Bill Self.
Welcome back. 1230 session features the student athletes of the University of Kansas Jayhawks. Devontae Graham, Malik Newman are with us. Kansas is the number one seed here. They are the regular season and tournament champions of the Big 12 Conference. They advanced here from Wichita, where they defeated Penn and Seton Hall. They'll play number five, Clemson, in tomorrow night's first game at 6.09. The men's basketball contact is Chris Thiessen. We'll see head coach Bill Self after these gentlemen leave the dais. We will go right to questions for a 15-minute session. First one's here. Hey, uh, Devontae, Luke Tecock from the News and Observer in Raleigh. Um, just curious, you had obviously a very long path to Kansas and getting here. At what point in your career did you really start to believe that you were the kind of player that, that you've become now? Uh, I mean, I think it started uh, probably once I got to Brewster, you know, and um, I think a lot of my confidence had, had went up and, um, and Coach Self believing in me once I got here at Kansas, uh, probably towards the end of my freshman year. Um, is when I really started to believe that that I could do something special uh, here at Kansas, and um, you know him and, and the coaching staff just believing in me and the guys that I was around at the time when I came in, and uh, really just helped me uh, become the player I am today. For both of you guys, um, what's the toughest thing matching up with Clemson that you've seen on film? Uh, Malik, Malik, you go first, please. Um, I mean, they, they have three uh, terrific guards. They can go get their own shot. Uh, they play good off one another. So uh, we just have to go, do a good job of containing those those guards. And I mean, they have a, they have a really good big and uh, Elijah Thompson. That I mean, he can pass. He can score on the block. So. Uh, we just have to try to limit transition and um, just try to keep those three guards contained. Uh, just what he said, you know, it's, it's a lot to do with their guards, uh, kind of like us. And um, so we just got to uh, contain them, try to keep them out of the paint, um, you know, make them take tough contested jumpers and uh, keep them off the glass and out of transition. Jacob Albrock, KWCH. Devontae, you tweeted during K-State's game that you were sort of pulling for them. The Big 12's well represented. Do you guys take any time to sort of root for conference affiliation or more specifically K-State? It's a rival most of the time, but you, you got a weird chance to watch them play tonight too. How does that work for you guys? Uh, I'm going to definitely watch the game. Uh, probably root for them. Uh, you know, I just want to see the Big 12 do good, like I said, you know, um, and unless we're playing against them. So, uh, I mean, if they're on TV and in the Sweet 16, you know, you're definitely rooting for them because we compete against them all year. So, you know, you kind of it's kind of like a brotherhood at the end of the day. Down here on the left, gentlemen. Anderson, uh, CBS 17 in Raleigh. Devontae, you're a fourth year senior, which in this day and age is a rarity. And I wonder if, if you're taking the time maybe to look around and, and kind of uh, smell the roses. It's been a great career for you and, and maybe take this in maybe a little bit more so than you might have in years past? Uh, definitely. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to take it one day at a time. You know, uh, Coach talked to us the other day, you know, we want to keep keep being together as long as we can, you know, have three or four more film sessions and keep practicing and, and keep traveling. So uh, just trying to take it one day at a time and, and enjoy the guys because uh, I know it's coming, it's going to end soon. So uh, just trying to enjoy it each moment, each day. Right there on the aisle, thank you. David Lawrence, Jayhawk Radio. Devante, can you talk about uh, now that LeGerald and Malik are playing at such a high level, uh, how does that change your thinking actually during a game, knowing uh, the confidence that you have on both those guys and what they can do? Uh, I mean, they've been playing unbelievable, uh, you know, so it just makes it easier for me and it makes me look good when I get to pass it to them and they knock it down shots and I get to rack up assists. So, uh, you know, I just look for them, especially when they're hot and uh, just got a lot of confidence that they'll knock down shots and make the right plays and, and, and just being aggressive. Chris, 
Chris Lazaro, oh. Kansas alumni, and Devante. Uh, how's uh, how's uh, Udoka looking this week? Uh, he's been looking great. Um, you know, he's trying to get back in shape. Uh, he's been doing a good job of staying out on the floor, and his knee looks great, and uh, he, he looks more explosive than he did last game. So uh, he's definitely going up. Malik, uh, throughout the year, you would talk to us about, you know, it's about confidence, being aggressive, but, but what else has made a difference um, in, in changing your game around uh, from the days where, you know, there were some inconsistencies and, and uh, you were struggling a little bit in shooting the ball? What, what's really been some more of the uh, things that have been going on on the outside that has affected you and helped you? Um, I mean, besides me just, uh, like I said earlier uh, this this week, uh, besides me just doing a, uh, some soul searching and things, I mean my teammates they just kept confidence in me. Um, the coaching staff did, and I mean they played a real big part of it because, like you said, when I was inconsistent, I mean those guys uh, like Devonte, Lajero, Fee, I mean those guys they were still coming to me, you know, telling me, hey, you gotta play, you gotta go score, you gotta be aggressive. So, um, I mean just those guys keeping faith in me, keeping confidence in me. Um, it just gave me some some extra confidence in myself, and um, I was just able to to find myself at a at a, a nice time right before the Big 12 tournament started. And I mean, I just haven't looked back since. Uh, Demonte, um, last week, Coach Self was asked um, how he keeps it fresh with a team that constantly wins tournament uh, uh, the conference and is always in the, in the tournament, how he keeps it fresh. And he pointed out that there's not a ton of tournament experience on the team right now with, um, in terms of the players who are getting a lot of playing time. Could you just address what you know, the team's perspective is on terms of uh, getting some of the guys like Malik in and being comfortable playing in the, in the tournament? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how he get comfortable with it, but uh, um, I'm pretty comfortable with it, and uh, you know, coach got a ton of experience. So uh, the guys who haven't been here before, you know, you can just see the excitement on their face just being here. You know, it's growing up; it's our dream to come and play in, in, in these games. And uh, once you're living in the moment, you know, you just gotta—it's a reality check. You gotta just—you're just happy that you're here and anxious to play, and uh, so you want to do everything you can for your team to win. And uh, we just we just happy to be here uh, as a team and and coaches he just talked to us about just doing the little things to win and staying focused and keeping distractions away. Uh, Lee Barfnick from the Omaha World Herald. Uh, Devonte, uh, at this point in the season, after playing 39 or 40 minutes a night, how much does your body scream at you when you go home after a game? Uh, I'm pretty used to it now, uh, so. Uh, I've been doing a lot of recovery more than I have in the past years and, and trying to get my rest and, and drinking a lot of fluids and things like that. But, uh, you know, you just got to get your rest and recovery, uh, especially when you're playing as many minutes as I do. So it's all about rest. We have five minutes to go in this session. Next question is right here. Devontae, could we go back to the just talking about rest and recovery? Didn't Frank have some unusual methods for that? Did you pick up any tips? for how to recover after games from Frank? Uh, well, Frank, he liked to get in the cold tub a lot. Uh, so, you know, I've been trying to do a little bit of that. I don't really like the cold. So uh, I like to get in the hot tub and roll out and, and, and things like that. So uh, I've actually been doing a lot more cold tubbing and massages and things like that. Anything else for the gentleman from Kansas? Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. You are excused and best of luck. Thank you. That way. <laughs> Head coach Bill Self will be next at 1245.
as advertised, right on time, the head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks is here, Bill Self. We're going to ask him to make a statement on his team being here in Omaha, and then we'll go to questions. Bill, please. Well, we're very excited to be in Omaha. We've been up here a few times in, over the last decade or so, and, and uh, certainly enjoyed our time here, and, and know that you know we, we, as the other three teams do as well, have a, a, a tough road to, to, uh, to get to uh, to get to uh, San Antonio, and, and uh, we know it starts out with uh, playing a, an opponent, opponent that's probably as sound and, and as good defensively as anybody we played all year long. So we know it'll be a, a tough challenge, but looking forward to it. First question's on the left. Xander, okay. Jonathan Alexander with the News and Observer in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, for a story we're writing on Devontae, um, was he on your radar before he got to Brewster Academy? No, we, we did not know of Devonte until he got with, with Jason at Brewster uh, Academy. And, and, uh, but we had recruited a number of players out of Brewster prior to him getting there. So uh, uh, obviously that's a school that we recruit and, and we became very aware for, of him after watching Brewster play. But we could not engage in recruiting him because he had not been released from Appalachian State. So. Uh, uh, whenever he got his release from Appalachian State is when a scholarship became available, and fortunately for us, the timing was right. Were you surprised um, that you hadn't seen him prior to that? Uh, no. Uh, now, maybe maybe one of our staff has seen him, but, but you know, you usually don't recruit guys uh, after they sign with another school. So, so we would have had to have seen him, uh, if I'm not mistaken, before the end of his junior year because he committed to Appalachian State right after that. So no, I, that, 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 that happens all the time, unfortunately. Bill, do, do you foresee a time when, when players will be compensated beyond you know, the, the tuition and, and the stipend they currently get? And uh, what are your thoughts on just the viability of that? You know, I, I don't have uh, uh, the answers. I, the, the model needs to change though. Uh, I think everybody would be in agreement with that. Uh, there's something that, that about uh, amateur athletics, I think, that's still very, very positive. Uh, and, and the way the players are taken care of now is so much different than the way they were taken care of, you know, even 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, but, but, the, but the reality of it is it, it's, 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 uh, it's big, big business, it's big money, and, and everybody is looking to make something out of it. And, and whether it be scouting services or, 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 or uh, you know, AAU programs, shoe companies, universities, uh, you, could, you could look at all areas and, 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 and the reason people are in the business is to try to make money and, and, and you can make a, an honest case that, that the, the student athletes uh, uh, obviously are the ones that create the money but re really receive very little of it. So I think, I think there will be an adjustment uh, uh, I don't know the magnitude of it, but, but I, I, I look forward to seeing some changes, though. Hey, uh, Bill, in December, you called this team the, the softest that, that you had coached at Kansas. Uh, I'm curious, how much of that did you mean literally? How much was emotion, and how much were you trying to kind of send a message? Well, uh, I'm probably 100% literally, and, and, and a lot of it was probably emotional, too, and probably trying to send a message as well. So. Uh, I, you know, the thing, the thing about it is we're, we're not a soft team. We're not. But it's one thing, but we haven't been a tough team either. And, and, and whenever you're not very big and you're playing four guards and, 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 and guards have to rebound the ball at, at, at a level that a four-man would rebound them and things like that, uh, you could make a case that you look pretty soft. And, and uh, we, we still don't do it great. Uh, but we, we're doing it a lot better than what we did uh, uh, earlier in the season. And... and uh, uh, but I still think we have moments where, where, where we don't play very tough. But I also think we have some moments where, where our experience and our toughness definitely shows. Well, no, the, the standards are high with right. you right in, in here. But I mean, now looking back and a, a body of work, wh where would this team rank is in that area? Uh, I, I think that when I when I define tough, I mean, obviously, it's it's mentally tough, uh, a, a big time, a big thing. But but, you know, you, Tough teams make other teams play bad when you're not playing well. And, and I don't think that we're, we're great at that. So, you know, I don't know where we'd rank out, but it, it would probably be closer to the middle of the pack because there's no way that we could be where we're at right now unless the guys were tough playing as small as we played. Uh, 
Coach, uh, Coach K talks a lot about Grayson Allen, who's a, a four-year senior, and, and the benefits of having a guy like that on the team. For you to have someone like Devontae, who is essentially a coach on the floor, uh, how big an asset is it to have someone who's so familiar with the program and what it is that you're hoping to accomplish? Well, I, I, think, I think it's every coach's dream to, to have somebody on there that can be an extension of you and an extension of the staff, and, and Devontae's certainly that. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to lead, be a great leader, unless you've got talent, too. And, and uh, uh, so everybody listens to him. Everybody listens. He has a unique way of, of getting his message to everybody without talking down to anybody. And it's always we. We need to do this. And, and, and uh, he's learned how to become a better leader since he's been there. But, but he's also seen some guys, you know, being with Frank and, and, and also Landon last year, he's, he's seen what senior leadership was really all about. And, and uh, he's done it better than anybody we've ever had here. Uh, uh, you know, he's a terrific player. But, but, but his intangibles is what make him, you know, special. And, and uh, uh, he certainly has more of those than anybody that I've been around. Hey Coach, this is the second week in a row you've been able to play close to home. How much of an advantage is that to your team to be, be able to play in front of your fans uh, like this? You know, I, I think it's an advantage. Uh, I think Wichita was an advantage for us. Uh, I'm not sure it will be as a big as an advantage here as what it was there. At, at Wichita, if the place seated 16, we had 13. It won't be like that here. Uh, uh, but but we'll, have a gr we'll have a great core group of fans here, and, and hopefully it will play out to, be, to, to help us. Uh, you know, that's one of the benefits of, uh, of being seated high is you get, a, you know, get an opportunity to possibly play close to home. And, and um, um, I, 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 don't think, I, I don't think it'll have much to do with the outcome of, of, of this weekend, though. I, I really believe that, that, that uh, uh, sometimes playing close to home can, can actually be a little bit more of a distraction or bring a little bit of pressure. And sometimes playing far away, you know, just us against the world, let's just get, out, get away from everybody. Uh, and really bond. So, so uh, I don't know if there's a, a perfect scenario in what's best uh, uh, this time of year, but I'd rather be close and not close. But I don't think it's a huge deal. We are halfway through this session. We have five questions up. The first, next three will come from this side of the room over here. Coach, I'm Mark Tracy from the New York Times. I'm writing a piece on the the expanding of the coaches coaches box, and I know you actually you got whistled uh, for being outside the coaches box. Well, I think not, maybe not not teed. Just warned. Warned. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. So um, I was wondering, just generally, if you were, you know, happy about that change made in the first place, and if you felt like the season you had like a little more room room to operate. Uh, uh, to be candid with you, I, I thought it was pretty insignificant change, whenever uh, uh, whenever it happened, and I was like, going, why is this such a big deal? Why, how, why is it so hard to stay in the box? And uh, you know, I stand a lot, but I also sit probably you know, 30, 40, 50% of the time. And so I've always struggled when, when, I, when I thought, I, you know, everybody else was coaching out on the floor. I never knew why we needed to do that. And then they extend the box, and I think it's been a great rule change. I think it's been good for, good for me. I think it's been good for all the coaches. Uh, you feel like you can actually have a little bit more communication on the other end of the floor. I do think now that they've expanded it, I do think it should be stressed to stay in it. Uh, uh, without question, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I did get whistled once this year for for uh, for you know sticking my toe two inches outside the box. But 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 for the most part, uh, I think it's been a I think it's been a positive rule change that hasn't impacted the outcome of games, but it's made it more comfortable for coaches to coach. Good Big 12 representation in the Sweet 16. K-State specifically, do you guys allow yourselves to root for them at all, or what do you do? Do you, do you watch those K-State games or, or Big 12 games in general when they're played? Uh, yes. I, I, I would say uh, watch, watch them in general. Now, now we'll, if, if we have an opportunity tonight, uh, and I don't even know what time K-State plays, we will positively watch that game. Uh, uh, even if we're watching film, we'll have two or three TVs on, and, and, and so, so yeah, we'll follow we'll follow that game. But we'll also try to do it with with uh, with West Virginia, obviously, and Tech as as well. But I'm proud of our league. Our league was terrific. But but in order to probably get the recognition that that the year deserves from a league, you need to perform well in the tournament, and, and hopefully, 
you know, our, our four teams have put themselves in a, in a, in a decent position. But hopefully, you know, uh, uh, we'll play well this weekend to kind of solidify what, what we already know is that, you know, it's an unbelievable basketball league. We are under five minutes to go. We have three questions up. One, two, three. Bill, for Devontae to play as many minutes as he has all year and specifically in as good a league as the Big 12 was, you played the game. You've been around it a long time. Do you still kind of scratch your head that he can function physically anymore? You know, Lee, uh, uh, you know, we played Frank a lot of minutes last year, and, and uh, uh, a lot of people play a lot of minutes. Uh, but a lot of times, style dictates why guys can play extended minutes. And, and we try to play fast. And if you watch us offensively, we have a lot of movement, guys cutting side to side. You've got to be a really well-conditioned guy to play as many minutes as he has. And, and, and the, but what we tell him is, hey, you're going to go hard twice a week. And, and, and we're going to rest you two days every week for the most part. And we're going to cut down your reps. And, and even though our guys would never say that we practice short, we've never practiced an hour, hour and 15 minutes uh, 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 max you know, from February on like we are now. It's always been a little bit longer than that. And, and uh, so the guys are getting more rest than what they probably think they're getting. And, 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 and he specifically, when you talk about the, with the trainers, the massages, the, 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 the cold tubs, all the stuff that he does just to get his body feeling good, uh, uh, it doesn't surprise me that he, he's able to do what he's done. Bill, uh, what concerns you more matchup-wise with Clemson the shooting ability of the guards or the way they've defended the last two games? Yes. <laughs> so uh, I, I would say, you know, that, that, that was, they were probably the most impressive team I felt like in the first weekend. Uh, uh, you know, they had a really nice win against New Mexico State, but, but against Auburn, that was a, that was a different level that, that I think probably anybody played at last weekend. Uh, I, I, I certainly, uh, uh, for, for me personally, you know, being a defensive-minded coach first, you know, how do we not allow those guys to have big nights? You know, you, you, you know, you, it's not going to shut down. You're not going to shut them down. And, and, and certainly, uh, uh, you know, you, one guy could, you know, he obviously makes six threes or, or seven threes or whatever, but you can't allow all three of them to have big nights. And, and that, 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 would be a, that would obviously be a concern. And, and, then, and then offensively, I think that's where – probably I'm, uh, I'm more, even more concerned is because, you know, you're going to have to get the ball to the second and third side. You're not going to be able to tackle on the first side against them because they're so sound defensively and their ball screen defense is really good. Uh, you you got to do some things and have great ball and body movement to force some bad closeouts and things like that because if it comes down to, to a late clock situation where it's our player against theirs or theirs against ours, their three guards have all shown they can go get their own. And, 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 you know, we have a couple of guys that are good at that, but probably not as good as what theirs are. So I, I think that's really important that we have great ball and body movement. Well, you've had a couple of critical senior point guards the last couple of years. Do you consider how long you're going to have players when you recruit them? Like, do you look at some guys and say, that's a four-year guy and yeah. this is a two-year guy and therefore, you know, we, or, we would prefer the four-year guy? Uh, no, no. Uh, we, we, we will project what, how long we think they'll be in school, but I, I've always been of the opinion, hey, recruit the best guys. You know, recruit the best guys, but, but, but knowing that the, the foundation of your program is going to be your upperclassmen. But you, there's no way that, that we would not recruit a guy that we thought would be a one-and-done or a two-and-done kid. You know, if, if a guy is a two-and-done and he's able to have enough success to leave to go be a first-rounder or, or whatnot, that's going to help you recruit the next guy, too. So, so I, 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 I'm under the opinion that, that with us, it, it changes. It, it changes. Uh, when we recruited Devontae, we thought he'd be a four-year guy. Uh, uh, you know, when we recruited Brandon Rush, we thought he'd be a one-year guy. And, and then when we recruited uh, uh, Joel Embiid, uh, I'm not sure we thought he'd be the third pick in the draft. You know, it, so, so it, 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 all, it all varies. But, but uh, uh, I, think, I think having a balance of, of youth and, and experience is still the best way to go. We're under a minute. Last question. Go. Coach, could you update us on uh, Yudoka's status and how he looked in practice this week? Yeah, he's been fine. He's been fine. He practiced full speed uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, we'll practice today. And, Unless something unforeseen happens, he'll be he'll be uh, he'll be starting and, and be full speed tomorrow. 
Take one more, last one. Shannon Somerville, Fox Carolina coach. I know you spent some time in South Carolina, specifically Spartanburg Day. What were your impressions of the area? And then what were your impressions of Coach Brownell and the job he's done with the Tigers? Well, if last first, he's done a terrific job. They're, they're, they're so well coached and well drilled. And, and I, you know, I don't know Brad well personally, but, but it seems like just a, you know, a really good guy uh, 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 that, 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 uh, uh, that can coach ball and, and, and certainly stays in his own lane. And, and uh, I know he's respected by everybody. Uh, uh, but I like I liked the area a lot. Uh, uh, I obviously didn't spend enough time in that area to get done what we need to get done. But certainly the, the little bit I was there, I really liked it. Thank you, Bill. OK, thanks. Good luck. Jim Bayheim is up next at 105. Next half hour features the Syracuse Orange. They are the 11th seed in the Midwest region. They are representing the Atlantic Coast Conference. They advanced here from Dayton, where it defeated Arizona State, and Detroit, where it defeated TCU and Michigan State. Syracuse will play number two, Duke, in tomorrow night's second game. The men's basketball contact is Pete Moore. The head coach is with us, Jim Beheim. We're going to ask him to make a statement about being here in Omaha, and then we'll go to questions. Jim? Thank you. We're happy to be here. It's uh, it's great to get into this term, be in this term in the beginning. To get here has been a great uh, tribute to our players. They've really worked hard all year and have uh, really played well in this tournament. 
Jeff, Jeff Gravely, WRL TV in Raleigh. Uh, you spent a lot of time with Coach K as friends, as coaches with USA Basketball. Does your relationship change at all now that you're in the ACC and that he has now officially, quote, borrowed your zone defense? No, it, it really doesn't. Uh, we've been friends for over, you know, 20 some years, almost 30 really. And uh, we've worked together 11 summers and uh, if two guys like us can work together over 11 summers and still be friends, that's a pretty, pretty good relationship. Um, and, you know, uh, his use of the zone, uh, he's used it a little bit in the past, but I think with this team, he felt this was the right defense for this team, and that's kind of what I used to go through when we played both. Um, and... Uh, I think he's done a, a great job of using a 2-3 a, a zone and different, differently than we play it. Um, but it's really effective, and uh, I think it's made a huge difference with his team with uh, what the defense has done for his team, not just his defense, but also to help, I think, his offense as well. Because when you're struggling on defense, it does affect your offense a little bit too. Uh, but he's done a great job with it. They play a really good defense. Sam McDowell with Kansas City Star. Jim, with, with the way player compensation is currently set up, is that the right model for your sport, or do you, do you feel like it needs changing? Yeah, we need to continue to tweak it to do more. I don't think we've done a good job of explaining to everybody what players actually get uh, in terms of the cost of attendance, in terms of meals now. A uh, player can get a meal or two meals really a day, and then our players take their meal money. And so they actually end up with a fairly um, good amount of money each month with that and the cost of attendance. and if they're eligible, five or $6,000, whatever it is, in Pell Grant money. So I think a player can get, there's some cost of attendance. That's where it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult, a little bit of a problem. Some places, the cost of attendance, a player gets $6,000. Other places, it's 2000 So there's a wide variance there, which it'd be nice if that could be figured out. I don't know if they will or not, but I think Basically, players can get twelve, fifteen hundred dollars a month plus their full scholarship. Um, that's a good model. I think we need to continue to look at that. Coaches have asked for years to do more, and for a long time they said we well, couldn't do it. But then they did it with the cost of attendance. So I think there's hopefully there's still some room in there to give more to the players. I think we need to stop and understand there's 4,500 players playing college basketball and about 50 of them are going to play in the NBA. The other 4,400 are pretty happy, like I was, to get a full scholarship. And as far as those 50 guys, if they don't get money in college, they get a lot of money down the road. And the other 50 or 100 that play in Europe do all right. But the vast majority of college athletes, college basketball players, are probably happy to have a full scholarship and the cost of attendance and leave college with a degree and a great basketball playing experience, in my estimation. Good afternoon, Jim. Matthew Gutierrez from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, Jim, uh, 1966, your last college game was against Duke. What, what do you recall fr from that game alongside Dave Bing? We had an eight-point lead, and we got somehow blew the game. So it was a very disheartening disappointing game. Duke had a great team. Uh, it was one of their better teams. Uh, Jack Marin and Berg and Vicendak, they had a really good team. But we played them in Raleigh, and we had a lead. I think it was six with about seven or eight minutes to go. And uh, we just couldn't quite close it, close it out. And uh, it was very disappointing loss. That was, of course, the, great, the year of Texas Western. Duke ended up playing uh, Kentucky in the regional, and Verga got sick, couldn't play, and they lost to Kentucky. They, they, I thought they were really the better team, but yeah, I remember that. I had 17. 
uh, Mike Waters with the Syracuse Post Standard. Jim, can it help either team tomorrow night offensively going up against the zone since both teams play zone? Well, you know, a lot of teams play zone, and you know, it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be play well against it. Duke's a very, very good offensive team. They play well against man-to-man -man end zones. They've seen both all year, uh, but uh, they're a very good offensive team, and they'll play well against. They've seen our, they play zone that helps a little bit. Uh, we've played pretty well against zones this year. Uh, excuse me for the most part. Uh, we did not play well at Duke. We didn't shoot well at Duke. They made some very bad plays. Uh, I, I think we'll play better against their zone this time, but they didn't shoot well against us there. I'm sure they'll shoot better. But uh, it, it helps somewhat, but uh, not, not necessarily that much. Coach Kate Carlton, South Boston News Record. The last time uh, you and Duke met uh, to close out the regular season, Bagley and Carter go for 35 and 17. What do you need to do differently defensively to try and contain them tomorrow night? You know, they're a problem inside for everybody. Um, they've averaged right around that for the year. What they did against us wasn't un unusual. Um, I think they averaged pretty close to that, 34, someplace in that area. But you know they're gonna they're difficult down there. You know we have to be concerned and do a, a better job. Our center got in foul trouble down there, um, but uh, we did a good job on the perimeter shooters. That's important. Um, but I think the key really for us uh, against Duke is we we have to play better than we've played down there and than we played in this tournament. I think we're perfectly capable of playing better, even though the record doesn't look like that based on what we've done in the tournament. But, you know, we've played against three pretty good man-to-man -man defensive teams. And uh, seeing as Duke does play some man-to-man, -man, it wouldn't surprise me if they played man-to-man -man in some cases against us. But, you know, we'll be prepared for that. But, you know, we'll, I think we'll, we've overall played pretty well against zones this year. Yeah, I'm Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Um, I saw you on TV yesterday saying defense is beautiful. And I uh, wondered uh, what, made me wonder what factors and details and elements maybe in your unusually educated view make defense beautiful. You mean my view is unusual? <laughs> <laughs> I think defense is good. I think, you know, it's funny about the fans and public and the media. Everybody says defense wins games, but then when they see it, they don't like it. <laughs> you know, fans and, and uneducated in the media and uneducated in the fandom base want to see 85 to 82 games, which I think there is a beauty in that, and you can, or 90 to 95 or 100. And you can do that. You can watch the NBA and see that anytime you want to. College basketball is different. It's always been different. Uh, you can control the game a little bit more with your defense and with your offense a little bit too. But it, there's a, a, a good thing in watching a good defensive team. Uh, if you're an offensive guy, then you're not going to like it probably. But if, you're, if you like defense and you see good defense, um, I watch Virginia's team play, and I think they're great. To, I love to watch. Their defense is unbelievable. You know, it's, it's fun to watch. But if you like offense, you're not going to like it. But, you know, we, we try to play a combination of good defense and good offense. This year we just can't do one of those two things. We've had many teams in the past that have played zone, but we've averaged 80 points a game. We just aren't good on that end of the court. Where we struggle is on that end. On defense, uh, if you like defense, we're, it's good to watch. But uh, our offense has struggled, and that, that, that gets difficult sometimes to watch. I don't like to watch it sometimes. We have five minutes to go. Next question's here, and then here, and then three, and we'll try to get you two. Go, please. Coach, uh, Mark Tracy from the New York Times. 
Uh, this is the second time in a row that you guys have hit the second weekend as a double digit seed. Obviously no one plans for that, no one aspires to that, you want to get the <laughs> highest seed possible, I get that. At the same time, is there something either kind of in regards to attitude and outlook or even in regards to style of play where you are somewhat well suited being, you know, at least seed wise the underdog? Well, you know, I think we are, we struggled this year for good reason with our offense in a good league and we just couldn't win it. We were close to winning two or three more games. We just couldn't get it done. But it means to me that you, if you lose an overtime at Florida State, you lose a close game at Virginia, you lose to Carolina at home by three, two or three, you know, you're, you're still a pretty good team. And so when you get in the tournament, you're still a pretty good team. And you know, we could have lost at the buzzer against Arizona State. They had a three from the corner. If they had, we'd have been home and nobody would have talked about us at all. But we squeezed that one out and got by TCU and Michigan State. So we're here. So we had the capability of that. We just, uh, you know, we're not able to get it done the regular season. Uh, the last two years when we made it to the Final Four, we were a little better offensive team. And so when we got in the tournament, we played better offensively. This year, our defense has carried us without any question. But that other team, we had two guys that are in the NBA on that team, you know, Malachi and Tyler Lydon. So um, it was a little better offensive team. And there was two seniors in the guard spot. Um, so it was, this, this team's much younger and much more challenged on the defensive end. But... Our zone helps us a little bit in back-to-back -back games or with a team that hasn't played against us. And a lot of teams have not played against zones, or if they played against a zone, it's not a good zone. So there's some teams that will come in with a false sense of security that, well, we played against zones. And, you know, we did well. But it's different. Our zone is a little different. It's better. It's just better because we work on it. We play it more. Duke's defense has gotten better this year, their zone because they've worked on it and played it more. So that might be a factor in, in the tournament that can help us, particularly back-to-back -back games when you have one day to prepare. So that's, uh, those are some, some of the probable reasons that, that we can, can do that. But, um, you know, you still got to make plays. And this, our team has made plays down the stretch, even – in the regular season, we made a lot of pl good plays in games to, to either win or to give us a chance to win. So um, I like this team. They give you everything they got. Um, I don't think there's many teams that have, you know, we have four of our five front line guys are freshmen, and the other guy is red shirt and sat out a year, so he's pretty, <laughs> hasn't really played a full season. So it's uh, unusual to have that many young guys in your front line unless you're at Duke or Kentucky, you know. Those players are a little different. We're under a minute. Qu next question's here. Matt Park, Syracuse Radio. Uh, Coach, I was going to ask about 66, so I'll test your memory here and lean on it a bit and see if you have any recollections of the 98 uh, tournament game against Duke in St. Petersburg. Yeah, we were, we hung in there for a while, but the, the uh, they made some, they made some long ones. The freshman uh, from Georgia made some really long threes, and uh, we hung around. But uh, they were, they they won the game pretty easily, is what I remember. It's probably why I don't remember it very well. Final question. Yeah, this is a pretty easy one, Jim. Eric Olson with the AP. Just. Uh, the way things broke, you know, three teams from the ACC get here. It's pretty uncommon at a regional to have three from one conference. I guess kind of what's your thoughts just on, on how things broke with three of uh, your league teams getting in here? You know, it, it happens. I talked to the committee a little bit about that by accident today, and it just, it, it's, you got, when you get a large number of teams in a, one conference, they're going to meet up if they can get through, you know, and it, it, I never like to play teams that I've played you know, in the tournament, and uh, it's, uh, it's, I think it's better for us when we don't, but uh, we have done it in the past, and we've won those games, but, uh, you know, I guess the good news is we'll have one team from our league in the Elite Eight for sure, and maybe two, but, uh, yeah, that, it just is it what happens, and today, 
trust me, when we got in, I didn't care where we were going or who we were playing or what day it was. We were happy to be in the tournament this year. Obviously, it was close. I thought our strength of schedule was good, and I thought we were right there. But, you know, last year we were right there, too, and we were on the other side. We were one place different last year. And uh, it just goes to show you that when you can get in at the bubble, you, you're you certainly capable of winning games. And uh, that has only increased, that likelihood has only increased over the last few years when you have so many really good teams. Uh, it used to be if you were on the bubble, you probably couldn't win anyway. But now those teams can win. And there's more than a couple teams that are on the bubble. You know, I mean, I know the. whenever I talk like this, people just get crazy and I get criticized everywhere in the country, but I'm used to that, so it doesn't bother me. But I've always advocated for more teams from when it was 64 to 68. And the playoff system that we had this year where we go and play, I think you could duplicate that in another regional and get a couple more teams in or four more teams in, whatever the number is. And I, I just think that when you give fan bases and players that opportunity to go play even if you don't win you had that opportunity and uh, I just I think it's a great thing because uh, if it hadn't gone from 64 to 68 we wouldn't be here I wouldn't be here now and uh, so it's uh, it's it's been a great it's, it's even better when you're <laughs> <laughs> when you when you're not you know you squeeze in and you can still get here when I started coaching if you didn't make the sweet 16 it wasn't even a big deal you know you had like you had to make the sweet 16 or else it was just awful now making the sweet 16 is a is a good thing it's a very good thing I don't care who you are I don't care if you're I mean obviously the one and two seeds expect it but it's still a good thing to get to the Sweet 16 because yeah, it's it's pretty darn hard to do. So we're uh, we're thrilled to have that opportunity to to be here. Okay, Jim. Thank you. Thank and you. Best of luck. segue immediately into the student athletes of Syracuse. Tyus Battle and Frank Howard are with us. It's a 15 minute session. We will go straight to questions and stay on time. Thank you. Go. It's for either one or both of the players. Mike Waters from Syracuse Post Standard. Tyus and Frank, can it help you guys or maybe it also helps Duke too offensively uh, going up against the zone since you guys play it yourself? Tyus, you're first, and Frank. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it could definitely help us. I mean, we know uh, how teams try to attack our zone and stuff like that. Um, so we put in some different things just to get easier shots against Duke's zone, um, stuff like that. Yeah, I think uh, our zone and uh, kind of everybody's zone is a little different, you know, um, especially now people are running a lot more, you know, so. People are putting their own little twist on it. And, uh, you know, I think our zone's a little different. So, you know, certain areas are a little bit more open than than other zones. But, you know, they, they have a great defense. You know, they're long, athletic. But, uh, you know, playing in practice, you know, you kind of get used to the pace and, uh, you know, certain moves and stuff you got to do to attack. Tyus, uh, Christian de Guzman, Citrus TV. You saw Duke earlier this year, a tough loss in Cameron Indoor. What do you take from that Duke game and try and improve on for tomorrow's match? Um, well, down there, I thought we did a, a pretty good job defensively, especially on the perimeter. Uh, we just have to do a better job um, 
contain the pain and stuff like that. And uh, down there, we just didn't shoot well. Um, I don't think that's going to happen again. I think we're going to be more prepared for that stuff. And um, that's pretty much it. Anything else for the gentleman from Syracuse? Okay, cool. gentlemen, smart oh. class. Thank you very much. Okay. Just, just one quick, last one, and we'll, we'll turn class loose. Uh, Frank, you've been through this before, having been to the Final Four. How do you transition from one weekend to the next, particularly when it was, you know, for a lot of us, maybe not you guys, but a surprising win Sunday, and then uh, you're right back uh, onto another trip? Yeah, you know, we, uh, in this tournament, if you prepare to lose, you know, you're probably going to lose. You know, so we, we, we're preparing for the long haul, you know, uh, taking care of our bodies, you know, uh, making sure we pack for the extra long trips. But, uh, you know, I think um, we, after you go through each round, you kind of, you know, eager to get to the next round. So, um, you know, we, once we finished that game, you know, we wanted to celebrate that for the night, you know, have a good time, you know, with the coaching staff and the team. But, you know, we, we just wanted to get back to practice and, you know, get down here. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Best of luck tomorrow. Student athletes from Duke will be next at 2.05.
Check. Check. Check, check. Check, check. Test, test. Test, test. Test, test. This is approximate level. Test, test. Test, test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Rough level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You want to see some more, okay? Check, check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Check, check.
Our final school today is the Duke University Blue Devils. They are the second seed in the Midwest region. They are representing the Atlantic Coast Conference. Duke advanced here from Pittsburgh, where they defeated Iona and Rhode Island. They will play number 11, Syracuse, in tomorrow night's second game. The head coach is Mike Krzyzewski. He'll be here along shortly. The men's basketball contact is Mike DeGeorge. And our student athletes here today are Grayson Allen and Marvin Bagley III. And we will go right to questions. Right there. Thank you. I figured nobody else was going to ask you something. I got to, you know, break the ice a little bit. Uh, Grayson, what's the biggest difference between their zone and your zone? Um, a lot of times uh, you'll see when the ball goes into the middle against them, their center steps up. A lot of times there's Chubu stepping up to take the ball in the middle. Um, whereas we try to keep our big to protect the rim and have another guy come to contest a shot in the middle or you know, challenge the ball, try to make him uncomfortable there. Mike Waters, Syracuse Post standard for both players, actually. Uh, does it help you offensively going up against the zone, the fact that you now play it? Marvin, you're first, please. Um, I mean, I don't think it, I don't think it really has anything to do with our offense. You know, we, we, we move the ball pretty well lately. Um, it's going around to everybody. Everybody's touching it. Everybody's involved in the game. So uh, I think if we continue to do that, then you know we can have great success uh, throughout the rest of the tournament. Uh, I, th I think it might help a little bit, just because you know we we know movements and positionings. Um, at the same time, Syracuse zone is different, and for the majority of the year, you go up against man-to-man -man teams, uh, so you don't prepare you don't have game preparation to go against the zone every day we have preparation to play zone against everybody obviously but as far as trying to execute against a zone and a zone that's as big as as long as Syracuse is it's it's difficult to actually prepare for that Kate Carlton South Boston news record for Grayson uh, you were on the 2015 championship team obviously had the great senior leadership by Quinn Cook you being a senior on this team with so many freshmen like Marvin have you tried to take on some of his leadership roles and be a leader for those freshmen um, yeah I mean I'm the leader of the team right now and um, as the captain that's what I'm trying to do trying to prepare them trying to lead them in the right direction and um, you know at this point in the season it's uh, it's really cool if we come together and, you know, the guys are listening to me out there on the court, you know, in huddles and everything. And uh, they're starting to speak up, too. And, you know, we're all listening to each other out there. And, uh, you know, we've really come together as a team here. Marvin, uh, Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Uh, you and Wendell had a pretty good game uh, against Syracuse the first time back in February. Uh, I guess, w how much adjustment do you expect to see Syracuse make against you guys? Um, oh, we're expecting to see a, a completely different team than we, we played last time. Um, you know, that's something that I've learned throughout the years. Uh, teams that we watch on film, you know, they play completely different when we actually get on the court, and it's kind of like, you know, we have to learn how to adjust, and uh, we did a we did a great job throughout the year. But uh, you know, I think Syracuse is going to be a, a different team. Um, you know, we last game we both had pretty bad games as teams as a whole, and uh, but you know, it should be a, it should be a great game, and I'm, I'm excited to get out there and compete with my 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 teammates and just you know try to continue to get wins. This one's for Grayson. Can you slap the floor while playing zone? And do you miss it? Uh, yeah, you can definitely slap the floor while playing zone. Uh, slapping the floor is all about intensity and getting a stop. Uh, I don't know if anyone's seen it yet or seen it in a zone yet. Um, definitely can, though. It's, it more symbolizes getting a stop than it does man-to-man -man defense. Question right there, standing up. 
Grayson, there's, there's been a lot of talk about just player compensation and potential of, of college players getting paid. Where do you stand on the viability of that? Um, you know, I'm, I'm here, and so I'm, I've been pretty happy with my four years of college. It's been awesome. Uh, it'd be really tough because you're changing something that's been in place for a long time. Uh, and so, you know, it sounds good. I'd love to receive some extra money. That'd be awesome. Um, but, you know, thankfully I'm not the one in charge trying to figure out how exactly to do that. Anything else for the gentleman from Duke? Okay, gentlemen, thank sure. you very much. You're excused. Good luck. Head coach is scheduled for 220. We'll bring him out at 220. Thank you.
Head coach of Duke is with us, Mike Krzyzewski, and we're going to ask him to make a statement about his team being here in Omaha, and then we'll go to questions. Mike, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're obviously very excited to be here in, in Omaha, you know, uh, great reception thus far. Hopefully we get one tomorrow night, too. Uh, but we're healthy, excited, and playing very good basketball right now. Hopefully we can keep that going. Starting the back, thank you. Mike Waters, Syracuse Post Standard. Can playing the zone on defense help you offensively when you go up against another zone? Uh, I think so. There's a little you know, more familiarity. Uh, I, I think you respect it even more because you know a little bit more of the intricacies of, you know, playing it. And so when you see Syracuse play it, you, you know, you have an appreciation for how well they do the way they do their zone. And uh, some, uh, some of the changes that they make as the year goes along, as their, uh, as their players improve, which Jim's players always improve. And, uh, but yeah, it can, I think it, can, it helps both teams, I think, understand that. Kate Carlton, South Boston News Record Coach. Uh, you kind of been an up and down team from three this year, but last weekend you drank. I'm sorry, we've been an up and down from th from three point land this year, but last oh. weekend you know you shot you drained 20 plus threes and you did it on a high percentage. What was the key last weekend to get anything going from three? Uh, guys had shots. You know, I mean, I think offense is an up and down type of thing, but overall we've been an outstanding offensive. We haven't been an up and down offensive team we've been a good offensive team all year long and if you are not hitting front if you only depend on the three then you're you know you're going to be in trouble uh, but we've been a good rebounding team and we have good inside players so you know, I think more balance balance is the key to being a really good offensive team and for the most part we've had that you know hopefully we'll be able to hit the three tomorrow but I'd be more concerned with just having balance. Sam McDowell, the Kansas City Star. Mike, there's been a lot of talk just about player compensation. Do you feel like the model that you guys have currently is the right model for college basketball, or does it need changes or tweaks at all? It's not my model that we guys have. You know, we do what the, other, what the guys tell us to do, okay? So, uh, no, the model needs to be changed, whether – yeah, what you, especially in regards to what a kid can, what a kid and his family can do before they come to your your institution, and uh, because the school and the coaches have no control over that, and uh, I think it starts with that and a different definition of amateurism, and whatever that does once they get there, the kids get a lot right now, in the last three to four years. I'm not sure how much research you've done in it, but. If you would compare what kids get today as compared to four years ago, it's a dramatic improvement. Dramatic. Not, not small, dramatic. And, uh, but again, I'd like for them to take a look at what happens before you get them and to make sure that the kid and his family are afforded the opportunity to max out, you know, like anyone else in our country, what talent will give you. Eric Olson with the Associated Press. I guess looking back at that uh, meeting that you had with uh, Syracuse back in February, how, how useful is the tape of that in preparing for this one? Well, the game we had, we didn't meet with them, but we had a game with them. And uh, uh, I thought, I didn't think either team played well. And sometimes that happens in a grueling conference schedule. Uh, hopefully, the other team isn't playing well, and you're playing well. But I, I thought we were both a little bit run down during that time. And so I don't think it's a good indicator. Uh, I think I heard Marvin mention something about it, that, that you know, they're different and we are too. Uh, they're better, we're better. Uh, you know, Marvin had been out for two weeks, and he just came back that day. Uh, Brissette and Dolajai for them, are different players now than they were 
you know, on February 24th. Uh, you know, they're, uh, we're both better teams right now. Jeff Goodman with ESPN. Mike, I have a, a very serious question for you. Uh, you you've been around Jim Bay. It is about time, right. that's true. Uh, you've been around Jim for a lot of summers in a row. Right. So I want your best Jim Beheim impression. No, I'm not. You know, look, I'm not Billy Crystal here or whatever. Uh, you know, Jim Beheim to me is my best friend in coaching, and uh, one of the really great coaches in the history of our game. And what he did to spend 11 years as I call my co-coach with U.S., was terrific. And uh, I could not have had a better guy. That's why I chose him uh, and asked him three times to be that. And uh, so we, we have a bond that is very, very tight, and so do our families. So uh, that's a difficult part about tomorrow. But the fact that we're both here, that's good. You know, that, that's good. But I love Jim and, and his family and what he's done for us and for the United States. Matt Park from Syracuse IMG. Uh, just a quick follow-up to that, Coach. Anything specific to the zone where it almost feels like he's kind of joked about you stealing something out of his playbook? Uh, first he doesn't of all, have a playbook. <laughs> you, you're right There's, about that. Yeah, I know. I, no, he does not have a playbook. It's all right here. Uh, and I guess my real question would be, since you've been through this uh, so much and more than anybody, is there skill in going from the second round to this weekend? Just some of it's luck, you know. Some of it's luck. You're healthy. Uh, you got a matchup that was more conducive to you than the other guy. And, and sometimes you're just like, for us, we're playing well. So, you know, we're playing our best basketball. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, you know, the zone itself, you know, I learned a lot from, from Jim, but also from Mike Hopkins and Jeff Capel. We spent a lot of time, you know, with the U.S., you're with all these guys and you're not just watching tape of Uruguay or, you know, Puerto Rico or whatever, you know, Argentina, you're, you're there with Thibodeau, with Monty Williams, with D'Antoni, McMillan, and all these guys. And so you talk a lot about basketball, and no one really has that opportunity. Yeah, they, you don't do that. And so, you know, Jim and Mike were – Mike Hopkins did an amazing job behind the scenes. Along, and so we learned a lot. We used it one time, and we won a game in Madrid against uh, uh, Spain, a big-time game. And, uh, but we practiced it a little bit. We are halfway through the session. We have two questions up. First one's here. Uh, Michael Presti, NCAA.com. Uh, two things. One, how difficult is it to coach against a good friend when you get in the NCAA tournament and someone has to go home? And secondly, how much do you enjoy being the youngest coach in the game tomorrow? Yeah, I like the second question better. And uh, a lot younger in every aspect. Uh, but uh, uh, you know what? We're both professionals. And, you know, for me, coaching against a former player who played for me or a good friend, I never look at the other sideline. It's uh, Duke against Syracuse, and he's going to go after us. We're going to go after him, and we'll be friends before and after and during, you know. But uh, you wouldn't show respect for someone you loved and had, had respect for by not giving your best. And so I expect his best, and he... I know he expects that from me. Mike, I'm Lee Barfnick from the Omaha World Herald. Uh, what do you recall from traveling the back roads in Nebraska in 1981 and 82? And Bill Jackman says hi. Yeah, well, Bill was a great kid. And, you know, the, for us, you know, we, we had to fly to Denver to get to Grant, Nebraska. And, uh, no, I, we enjoyed it. They're great people. And, uh, you know, we're great. We're really good friends. And it was a time where, uh, yeah, yeah, he felt the necessity of getting back to Nebraska for family reasons. And, yeah, but we've maintained a, a great friendship. Yeah, uh, 
you know, I, I thought he was a fantastic player and, and even a better person. And he's proved to be a good, really good player, but he's really fulfilled the other uh, uh, part of it extremely well. Coach, thank you for your time. Matthew Gutierrez from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, Michael Buckmeyer, walk-on. Um, what, what have you seen from him and his role as a walk-on and, and sort of what does he bring to the team? Yeah, we're, we're you know, we don't, it's tough to get, uh, without insulting our student body, the level of athlete that could be a walk-on on our, t our team. And, and uh, Buck does that, you know, plus he's smart. And he played in a really good league in Philadelphia. And he's, he's been terrific, you know, uh, uh, be much better than I could have expected. You know, his dad was a, a great soccer player at Duke. And so the athleticism, I think, comes from, from that. But we're happy to have him. Anything else for the head coach of Duke? Okay. okay thank Mike, you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Good luck. It. Thanks. Thank you. We'll see All you tomorrow. Right. All right. Good luck. You.